So just to introduce, when I think about technology, I think about the many other revolutions, technological revolutions that have taken place. This is not the first time that the way that we communicate is fundamentally changing. And when our communication means are changing, so do our relationships, and so does our experience of ourselves as human beings. The fundamental human needs don't change, but the means for mating or dating, first of all, then mating and then breaking up, those are undergoing some major transformations. It's never been easier to cheat, and it's never been more difficult to keep a secret. It's probably the, the order of the events. You know, where people come to my office with stacks, digital evidence, an archive of everything. No, no, this is like a death by a thousand cuts. You know, nobody ever had the, so much evidence that they had to be able to, to take in. Or on the other side, you know, when you are flirting on direct message on Instagram with someone, are you cheating? Where's the boundary? And if that person is an ex, does it make a difference? You know, where are the boundaries at this moment is a fundamental question. And then expectations. We have unprecedented expectations for our romantic relationships at this point. And often we lack the skills to even be able to reach this whole new Olympus. I think that we talk about this loneliness a lot, but it, because people have felt lonely, the, the feeling itself, the experience, is not new. But something is changing. And it has something to do with the fact that we have never been able to be more connected. And yet, something about that connection, that promiscuity of connections that we get online, is creating a new kind of isolation. You know, it's fantastic to have FaceTime and it's fantastic to have Skype. I've used it the entire trip. It allows you to connect with your loved ones across time zones and across continents. It allows older people to stay connected with the people that they love. And it certainly allows self-identified communities to meet other people who are like them. So this is not a good or bad conversation. But at the same time, this world that we live in, where we are in constant motion, we seem to be uprooting ourselves more easily than it takes to repot a plant. And we have a thousand virtual friends, but nobody to feed our cat. And we have 15 people that we can text on a Friday night and 150 likes about this evening's festivities, but I don't know if I have somebody that I can call on Sunday morning when I have a hangover and I need someone to go to the pharmacy for me. That friend, that person who is right next to us in 3D, that is a different experience. In addition, you know, Fake news is not just for the president of the country that I live in. Fake news is also something that is happening, you know, online, in our personal spheres, in which I will curate and carefully filter a presentation of myself, a performance of my life. And you, the viewer, you probably don't have nearly as many people who follow you as you follow me. Therefore, I'm going to create a situation where you are going to feel just a bit of jealousy and just a bit of competition and just a little more loneliness. Ambiguous loss is a term that was coined to describe when we are in a situation of unresolved mourning, because we don't really know if the person is there or gone. Meaning, for example, if you have a family member who has Alzheimer, they are still physically present, but they are psychologically gone. Or if you have someone who is missing or has disappeared, they are physically gone, but psychologically present. More and more people in my office are describing to me situations where they're lying next to somebody who is physically present, but psychologically absent. They're in some other world. And it can be a world, who knows? Who knows? It may be simply browsing, it may be just liking, and it may be a full-blown affair because you don't even need to leave the house anymore for that. But that notion that I am actually experiencing a loss of trust and a loss of social capital from the very person next to whom I should not be having this kind of loneliness. That is probably one of the new faces of loneliness that comes with technology.
I want to ask, this is your first time in Australia. We're so thrilled to have you here. And you've been travelling the world with talks similar, but not quite the same of this, um, having these discussions with uh, different cultural contexts and different cultures generally. I'm wondering how the conversation changes as you go between nations and between communities. Oh, that's a beautiful question. Um, first of all, hello, thank Hi. you. <laughs> We're going to talk. <laughs> you know, um, I gave a talk not too long ago, the last year in India, and it was called Straddling Tinder and Arranged Marriages. That says it all, doesn't it? Yes. So the same 20-something-year-olds that were talking to me about being on Tinder were then talking to me about how they were going home for the weekend where they would be sitting in the living room and the people would be coming through that their parents had chosen for them. And so this notion of living in different cultural codes at the same time, it's no longer that you leave one code and you move into a new one. It's that you actually inhabit a number of different worldviews inside of you. Um, that, that, I think for me, India is definitely a place mm. where, um, and I would say, you know, the other, uh, the other place where I really experienced that, um, but more in an underground fashion, the only language, mating is translated in 30 languages, and the only one we didn't get was Arabic. Um, but that's okay, because the web <laughs> <laughs> reaches, and the podcast reaches, and so, um, what's very interesting um, is who writes to you. That's a cultural question too. So I, get, I got, you know, after the second TED Talk, about 1,500 letters. And the majority of the letters came from unfaithful women or hurt men. Mm. Those that have the least permission to talk. Do you understand? Mm. The woman who strays, in many parts of the world, she is hidden beyond hidden. There are still nine countries where she can be stoned just for that, and killed for that matter. And the man who is hurt, in many parts of the world, he can't say that out loud either. 